Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. class we have were looking at uh, flow equations in a particular form which is known as the integral form of uh, flow equations uh, the control volume approach uh, and in this class we will look at uh, another kind of analysis another kind of uh, equations of the same uh, conservation equations now in uh, differential form uh, the uh, there are really two kinds of uh, approaches looking at analyzing fluid flows in the control volume approach or the integral forms we are uh, really looking at uh, analyzing uh, the fluid flow through a certain system which is a control volume uh, and we look at how changes happen within the control volume due to uh, fluxes which uh, happen across the control surfaces. So, you have control surfaces and control volume and we write the mass, momentum and energy balance uh, in an integral form. The mass conservation uh, written in for this control volume, this control volume is uh, rho dv which is uh, this is the total uh, mass uh, of uh, the control volume if there are any changes to that mass it should uh, have happened due to fluxes around the control surface which is rho v uh, dA. So, v dot n where n is a normal. So, uh, this is really the flux of uh, mass and uh, since the total mass it never changes this is equal to uh, 0. Mm. So, uh, this is the conservation of mass. Similarly, if you consider the conservation of uh, energy, uh, uh, so conservation of momentum, uh, rho v is the momentum uh, and momentum within the control volume if it has to change it is due to uh, changes due to um, uh, the rho v which is the momentum and p dot n d a which is the momentum flux and this can be due to various forces. They can be due to uh, the body forces which is uh, termed as just body force f b and uh, this is integrated over the uh, volume. The other is surface force which is here mainly the pressure forces and shear forces and p n d a. So, this is just the statement of some shear force, this is a sec statement of second law of Newton that change in momentum uh, is equal to uh, the sum of forces that come onto the body. And then the first law of thermodynamics which is uh, dou by dou t changes to energy which is total energy is internal energy plus summation of uh, kinetic energy and the potential energy uh, that uh, over a control volume is actually due to the fluxes of energy across the surface V dot n d a uh, over the control surface is can be due to some heat uh, that is heat transfer and it can be also due to um, the work done and here work done can be uh, due to body forces if there are body forces then the work done on those body forces is f v uh, d v ok. So, where v is the velocity and uh, some sh uh, shaft work or shear work. So, this is the sh statement of uh, the energy equation which is nothing but statement of first law of uh, energy, uh, first law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, 
uh, this is the integral form of a equations and we will use them significantly in the course of the uh, work. The other form is here we do not go into the details of the flow field. Uh, what is happening at each point in the flow. But if you want to know that is uh, important to know that uh, to look at fluid flow phenomena in compressible flows then we should really approach every point. The way to go about doing that is through uh, differential equations. So, we will just look at uh, the differential forms um, the same three laws the three conservation laws we will express in differential form. Uh, when expressing them in differential form, we have to understand uh, the differences in approaching them. Uh, usually, when you look at differential forms, they are look, uh, looked at you are looking at a particle and you follow the particle and then you say uh, how is the velocity changing, the changes in velocity is related to flow uh, to the forces as you follow the particle. Uh, that kind of an approach is Lagrangian approach in uh, terms it is called a total derivative or a material uh, derivative. But uh, if you look at fluid flows there are so many particles, there are so many uh, such particles would you follow all of them individually. So, in fluid flows the other approach is usually to look at a particular point in the flow field uh, and then see how velocities vary within that point and so on. Uh, that is known as the Eulerian frame of uh, looking at things. So, these two frames can be uh, 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 represented or these two uh, frames can be related to each other uh, through uh, the definition of the total or material derivative uh, consisting of a spatial uh, a temporal part and a spatial part. So, this is the Eulerian uh, representation while d by dt which is on the left hand side is a uh, Lagrangian representation d by dt uh, total derivative or material derivative is equal to uh, uh, this form where v dot del uh, is actually u do for a uh, Cartesian frame it is u do by do x plus v do by do y plus w do y do z. Uh, this term comes out to be like this. Of. So, if it is uh, say you are talking about a particular uh, velocity u component of velocity it will become u dou u by dou x plus v dou u by dou y plus w dou u by dou z or if it is temperature it becomes say dou by dou x plus v dou t by dou y plus w dou t by dou z. So, it comes so on. So, this term gets expanded into such a form. Okay. So, where del operator is the usual um, gradient operator. Okay. So, uh, this uh, form is important. So, a lot of uh, vector calculus and uh, so on are important over here. So, you should uh, just revise them if you have not uh, if you need to uh, again. Uh, so, if you consider a very very small fluid uh, parcel a uh, very small fluid element and we are going to do analysis on such a small fluid uh, element which is infinitesimally small. Uh, the mass inside that particular uh, element is nothing but uh, rho multiplied that by that small volume uh, rho v. So, uh, what we uh, should say is that uh, mass is constant uh, mass does not change. So, d m by d t is 0 to as you follow that particular fluid particle or fluid parcel. Uh, so, uh, d m by d t is 0. So, rho v is 0 uh, which is you, you can uh, then uh, use the rules of differentiation to uh, find this out which consists of changes to density and changes to volume and uh, uh, the changes to volume can be related to uh, how individual uh, these particle uh, this fluid volume changes. Uh, due to velocity gradients it is uh, so in x y z directions the changes are related to dou u by dou x dou v by dou y and dou w by dou z. Uh, so, in on an average the change of volume is dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou y plus dou w by dou z. This is known as the dilatation of that uh, fluid parcel. So, uh, del dot uh, v 
uh, and therefore, uh, we can say that uh, the change in mass should be equal to change in uh, density d rho by d t or it can be due to dilatation del dot uh, v. So, it uh, the total change in mass is anyway 0. So, we get this particular equation d rho by d t plus rho del dot v is equal to 0 and d rho by d t can be expanded uh, rho plus uh, v dot del rho. So, this is an operator v dot del multiplied by 2 rho. So, the taken together you can also write it in this form 2 rho by dot t plus uh, del of rho v equal to 0. For uh, steady flow uh, del rho v is equal to 0. Now, this is a compressible fluid flow. So, uh, density is uh, a variable it is not a constant anymore. Uh, so, this is conservation of mass. Uh, now, let us go and look at uh, momentum conservation. So, here now um, uh, momentum is mass multiplied by the velocity. Velocity is a vector, momentum is a vector. So, we are dealing with vector equations. If you are looking at Cartesian coordinates, this involves three components u i plus v j plus w k. So, three different velocity components and similarly forces also in three different uh, directions. Uh, these forces can in general be body forces or surface forces. The body force is usually due to gravity rho g. Uh, now, if you consider left hand side you have d by dt of uh, momentum which is mass multiplied by velocity, uh, but uh, already we know there is a conservation of mass applied here Im implied here. Therefore, you get this term it comes out to be rho dv by dt. Okay, so, now uh, what are the surface forces? So, uh, left hand side is nothing but the acceleration terms rho dv by dt while the uh, right hand side is due to uh, surface forces and body forces. So, what are these surface forces? If you take any small uh, uh, volume, uh, it has uh, let us take this cuboidal volume, it has uh, different surfaces and at each uh, surface you will have uh, forces that occur um, both in the uh, same directions. For example, if this is the x direction then you have forces along x direction and you have forces along uh, uh, y, uh, y direction as well as z direction at a particular point. So, uh, if you take any particular point and have different uh, surfaces you have uh, forces along different directions. Therefore, uh, this uh, particular if you divide by the area force divided by area is a stress. So, at a particular point you can have a state of stress and that is uh, defined uh, the stress is actually a tensor because at every surface you can have forces in all other uh, in every direction. So, tau x x represents uh, if you consider a stress tau x x is actually uh, a force uh, along x direction f x over an area. Uh, which is an area and the normal of this area is also along x direction. So, uh, normal is also along x direction. So, uh, you can look at the uh, coordinate system here and understand them. So, uh, if you consider uh, a force along x direction it is composed of uh, several uh, different stress components. One is of course, the stress uh, it, it is due to the um, area uh, with having a normal x and force along x, but it can also be due to a stress where um, it has a normal is at y, uh, but force is along x. So, this component is the normal component normal stress ok, it is a normal stress it is acting perpendicular to the area. Uh, while this tau y x and tau z x which are all uh, x components of velocity where the areas are perpendicular to y and z. These are tangential components. So, these are shear stresses, shear stresses ok. So, shear stresses um, 
Now, uh, these uh, components of uh, forces in general can vary across different areas. So, if you take the effective uh, force which is uh, from one section to the other section, there is a change which is so tau x x plus dou tau x x by dou x d x is the change as you go from uh, x to x plus d x. Okay. Similarly, y to y plus d y net force will be the difference between these two forces which is dou tau x x by dou x dou tau y x by dou y similarly uh, so, uh, for every other force. So, just the f x that is force along x direction is a summation of different uh, components of the stress tensor. Okay. So, dou tau x x by dou x plus dou tau uh, y x by dou y plus dou tau z x by dou z. So, similarly in the uh, vector equation which is the momentum equation which has about x all x y and z components in general the surface force is actually uh, composed of f x, f y and f z and they in turn are composed of these derivatives. And so, divergence of the stress tensor which is represented over here uh, is the uh, surface force in general. Now, what is the uh, particular uh, uh, stress, how is it related to uh, the um, uh, velocity uh, gradients is what we have to see and we are considering a Newtonian uh, fluid and in that fluid the stress is directly proportional to the strain rate, shear strain rate or strain rate and the strain rates are uh, uh, given by the velocity derivatives. So, this is the Newtonian uh, uh, flow or a Newtonian fluid. Uh, so, uh, therefore, uh, you know that tau i j or the uh, uh, stress is uh, the viscosity times uh, this uh, gradient of velocities dou u j by dou x i. So, if you take uh, for example, tau x y this will be nu dou u by dou y plus dou v by dou x. So, it is a general representation uh, the where you can replace i j by x y and then the corresponding coordinates you can get it. But if you look at the normal stress it consists of a pressure term, pressure is a normal force and it consists of another part which is related to dilatation and where lambda is known as uh, bulk viscosity and you have the normal uh, stress term nu dou u by uh, dou x. So, dou u by dou x 2 nu dou u by dou x. So, now we can plug these uh, different forms of the uh, stress uh, tensors into the equations that we had just formed earlier and we get terms related to pressure, pressure gradient dou p by dou x in u rho dou u by uh, du by dt is equal to minus dou p by dou x this is the normal stress terms in u directions and shear stress term in y and z direction. This is the general form of equations for uh, uh, momentum equations similarly in v and in w coordinates. Okay, this is nothing but Navier-Stokes equations, but in this equation uh, now density is a variable, rho is a variable not only is rho a variable nu which is the viscosity is also a variable it is a function of uh, temperature now. So, in general you can uh, write so read uh, rho dv by dt where v is a vector is uh, the body force rho g uh, plus in general uh, the uh, divergence of the stress tensor this is the surface force surface force and uh, with the definitions of the uh, stress tensor and uh, related to uh, the velocity gradients we can uh, write them in general here um, that rho dv by dt is rho g and this is uh, gradient of pressure and then the other uh, stress terms. Uh, so, for incompressible uh, flow when you consider incompressible flow in general del dot v is uh, 0 is equal to 0. 
so all these terms related to del dot p drop off so you get a simplification with this new del square v where nu is also taken to be a constant uh, if you consider in general the in in visit uh, equation where new, uh, you don't consider viscous forces so this completely drops off viscous forces all viscous forces drops off this is now uh, rho dv by dt equal to rho g plus uh, minus uh, gradient of pressure here uh, rho is still a variable so this is euler equation where rho is a variable this is an incompressible flow equation where rho is taken as a uh, constant so these are various forms of the momentum conservation equation the most general form is represented here and expanded over in this equation now if you consider uh, the uh, energy conservation it comes back to first law of thermodynamics uh, change in energy is related to uh, heat added and work done on the system uh, so here it is given negative sun so it is a work done by the system so dq by dt minus dw by dt energy is composed of internal energy kinetic energy and potential energy so total energy is rho multiplied by this particular thing now we have to relate um, how heat gets into the system how work is getting done on the system so uh, heat coming into the system is uh, getting transferred by conduction it's a fourier's law of conduction minus k delta t and you have to consider different uh, surfaces how heat gets transferred the net rate of flow into the system is nothing but gradient of uh, this k delta t uh, which is del dot k delta t so this is uh, the formulation for the net heat transfer that happens per unit volume so dq by dt is equal to del uh, dot k delta t and here we are assuming there is no heat being generated now what about work done in a similar manner as before uh, we will be considered heat transfer we are checking the work done and work done you know the force multiplied by uh, velocity or if f dot v is the work done so uh, if you take fx the force force in x direction if it has components tau xx tau xy and tau xz and you have to multiply it by the corresponding velocities u v w you get w x work done on the back, uh, work done by uh, uh, the stresses on uh, the x uh, on one particular uh, phase consider the other phase net work done dw by dt is equal to divergence of w which is divergence of v dot uh, the uh, the stress tensor v dot stress tensor tau ij now this can be expanded uh, by uh, vector identities um, and you can get two terms one having a del dot tau ij v dot del dot tau ij the other one tau ij do u by do xj okay so now if you get these terms and uh, this is related this can be extracted from the momentum equation rho dv by dt minus rho g uh, while this term is still remains okay so now we put all of them together rho d e by dt plus v dv by dt minus g v because v square by 2 is differentiated d by dt is uh, v dv by dt while uh, you had the term g r g r where r was the uh, re, uh, the uh, displacement vector so dr by dt is v uh, so now you find these terms here v dv by dt and this term they are common and they get cancelled off and you are left with only the uh, heat transfer terms and that is conduction heat transfer term and this particular term tau i j dou u j by dou x j uh, this dou i tau i j consists of pressure term and uh, terms due to uh, the uh, velocity gradients so they can be separated the pressure term comes out as p del dot b 
while you are left with all velocity gradients and this term is known as uh, the viscous dissipation term. This is uh, all the dissipation that happens due to viscosity and velocity gradients and you can simplify uh, the pressure term use the continuity equation uh, where del dot v can be represented in terms of d rho by d t and uh, therefore, this uh, pressure term comes within uh, the brackets E plus P by rho is nothing but enthalpy. So, finally, from the conservation energy conservation term we get an uh, equation for change in enthalpy rho d h by d t is equal to changes in pressure d p by d t plus uh, del uh, dot k uh, del t this is the conduction heat transfer and viscous dissipation term. So, this is viscous dissipation. So, this is first law of uh, energy, energy conservation. Um, this is uh, enthalpy, uh, pressure and uh, uh, heat that is getting transferred and viscous dissipation. So, this now uh, forms the three forms of equations, uh, which is conservation of mass, momentum and energy. Along with you have to apply uh, relevant boundary conditions. Uh, the uh, appropriate boundary condition is that at the fluid solid interface the velocities of fluid and solid are the same which is no slip condition no slip condition and uh, uh, temperature you can when looking at the temperature boundary condition it can either be that the temperature at the fluid and solid are the same okay uh, no temperature jump across them or if you are solving uh, uh, you can apply either of the two cases uh, one is no temperature jump or equality of heat flux uh, at the uh, boundary they are two different kind of problems either or the or of them have to be applied so if you apply the appropriate boundary conditions with the uh, equations and along with this you need uh, of course the equations of state p is equal to rho r t and some function of uh, for the viscosity and thermal conductivity. If you get them then you can solve these equations, uh, but they are extremely complex and nonlinear. So, there are no analytical forms they are usually solved in a numerical form. So, this is another uh, kind of uh, analyzing this fluid flows and this is done using differential equation. So, it is called the differential form. So, we have integral forms and uh, differential forms of equation. Uh, the first kind of analysis that we will do is always using the integral forms. Uh, so, we can uh, get to know what is happening within uh, a certain control volume due to fluxes across them and we can get simple relations between what is happening to the uh, fluid flow. So, we will proceed with uh, uh, a specific kind of analysis with certain assumptions known as quasi 1D assumptions in the uh, coming classes. Uh, thank you.